Uh, it is now nine o'clock. So why don't we get started, okay? And just a, a real quick thing, and then I'll, I'll uh, swap it over to you, okay, Raj? Okay, quick introductions. Okay, hey, again, welcome uh, everybody. And for those of you, I, I see many of you were here yesterday, and we're glad to have you here, and hopefully we can add a little bit to what we had yesterday. Uh, we're going to be dealing with the Office, Microsoft Office 365 apps. We call them apps now, not tools or whatever, uh, programs. Uh, so, but anyhow, uh, we started yesterday. Raj gave you a you know, kind of an introduction to the online in the cloud version, and we're going to be doing more with this today and showing you a really, really good tool that you can use in your classroom. But and just in case, as a quick reminder, how do I log into my uh, Office 365? Uh, if you can't remember the you know the uh, the, the URL. You can go to the district, go to Technology Resources for Teachers, and over here there is a office, a, an Office 365 page, and here is the link right here that you can click on, okay? To save time doing that, Roger recommends that once you're here, what is this, one minute overdue? Microsoft, I'm going to click that. I don't know what that was, Raj. I got some kind of a weird thing uh, from GoToMeeting. Anyhow, you can go, you know, copy that. You know, do a copy. And all you got to do is, across the top here, you can, as you probably know, put some of your bookmarks and hit go here and just hit paste. Uh, if I do that, you won't see anything because... Mine is filled up, and if you see the little arrow there, you'll see that I just pasted it right there, and it will take me there. Okay, so that'll save you a lot of time. It'll either take you to, as Raj said before, the login page or directly to this. Uh, quite often now, uh, once you log in, it, there's a little square that says keep me logged in on this computer, and it will, you know, keep you logged in so you might want to do that anyhow once you're here last little stupid little tidbit of the day from me right now is this notice that my screen my the top of my office 365 may look a little different than yours and this is because I went over here and you see where it says settings if you click on settings you'll see a whole bunch of these little theme things and if you don't like what's up there, hit another one. Okay? Okay? Isn't that exciting? Raj, control yourself. Okay? I fell off my chair. <laughs> Anyhow, a little quick little thing. You know, uh, my my daughter and I share a uh, uh, an, uh, Microsoft Office, you know, a, a personal account. You know, I uh, have the... As Roger explained yesterday, when you rent or buy one, you have five downloads. And uh, I gave one to her. And about once a week, I go in there, and she's changed the top here. So I have to try to keep up with it. And with that, uh, Roger is going to talk to you about forms today, which I think is one of the really coolest little apps going. And it's one of the easiest ones, too. So... With no further ado, if I can figure out where the heck to change this, uh, I will do that. Where the heck? I've lost it, Raj. Can you take over? Uh, I am going to. Okay, please do. Let's see. I've lost it on my thing. Uh, change presenter. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Uh, there we are. We're seeing. Yeah, thank you. Raj is much more technological than I. You can see that at the top. With my there. little yeah, yes. customization. It looks. Right. Yeah, and, and, and that was mine until this morning, but I decided to be bright and sunny. Okay, uh, a couple of things. What I uh, like you to do at some point during the 
uh, presentation, maybe, and you can follow along. But there is a handout on your dashboard. You'll see uh, a link that says handouts, and there is one there. And there is a document I created that I'm going to show you on my screen that will contain uh, kind of a rough outline of what we're talking about here, as well as some links to the websites I'm going to show you that are all related to using uh, Microsoft Forms uh, in education. Okay, so that's a handout. I think, Gene, when you put this up on the web page, yes, uh, you can actually uh, yeah, put I'm, that link as a separate link as well. What I'll do, I'll do uh, is download that file and put it right there too. Yes, absolutely. And this this is just a little guide that will lead you to, uh, again, some links, and I'll show it to you right now, or shortly uh, when we get into our uh, forms. This is what it looks like when you sign into Office 365. Here are your apps, and there are, are some other things. Yours is going to look different because you'll have different apps. Uh, a lot of this uh, is related to stuff that I do. So those will appear kind of like they do on some of your programs with uh, most recently opened or uh, activated links, et cetera. So what we're looking at is Microsoft Forms, okay? And the, our, I'm gonna click on the app, and it quickly goes into, uh, good boy, right, blah, I'm gonna create a form. You will see this uh, every time you go into uh, Microsoft Forms, and and this is pretty much true. <laughs> you can easily create surveys, quizzes, polls, and so on. I'm going to X out of this for a second and show you what it will look like when you activate um, your uh, Forms app on your in your Office 365. Some of these may look familiar to you because this they started off getting created here on my computer, and then uh, they get passed along and shared and so on. A form is a, uh, they, some people, you know, it might be a survey, it could be, uh, it could be a poll, it could be a quiz. Um, it's something that you can quickly share out to your class. You can, you can uh, they are shareable by way of links to maybe parents. Uh, you can put them, you can create uh, a QR code and share them. And there are a number of ways, basically manage some uh, formative assessment tasks in your classroom. You can use them as exit tickets. Depends how much you use your technology in class, what you want to use them for. But let's take a look at, again, um, the, I want to show you the document that I referenced a minute ago. It's a Word file, and again, you can download it. This this is it, and I put in uh, these two links here. This is what we're talking about here, surveys, quizzes. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this term, branching. Um, built into a form, is it, uh, as you'll see, you can quickly uh, assess and determine what, um, what, what you need to maybe spend more time on, what's maybe a particular student needs some extra attention, uh, learning maybe something in math, science, or uh, some term that you're dealing with uh, in reading, maybe vocabulary and so on. But uh, it, it really is uh, incredibly simple, very intuitive, but <laughs> that word uh, is always uh, kind of cautionary these days. Intuitive means, uh, oh, I can look at it, understand it, figure out how to do it. Well, first time through anything, the intuition re really needs to be, you know, a wide angle. Okay, how, what is this going to look like? Um, forms is intuitive, but there are a couple of things you, you will probably want to you go through trial and error. Like. But uh, get, follow this guide and this link will take us to uh, some of these programs. Um, I'm gonna, one of those links goes to roughly uh, a replication of the document I have. But the links down here, this is really what you're going to be going for. The quick start guide for Microsoft Forms. And then 
how it looks in school. There's a full cycle of forms here that if you look at what's out there already, uh, you'll get an idea of just how really easy Microsoft Forms is to work with. So let's go back into my forms and let's take a look at one. This is one, uh, this is a draft. Much like all online Office 365 apps and programs you're working with, they are saved as you create them, automatically saved. You don't have to do a, a save as. And you can go in and then edit them at any time. So what we're gonna do is uh, look at one, I also find one. Um, you can delete them. <laughs> I have quite a few, in fact, it, it, it might be um, a good idea for me to go in and delete these. A webinar uh, demo form, uh, these are all fun things you can see. Uh, name them whatever you want to make them useful, but they're all stored up in the cloud automatically. You don't have to go finding a folder or a location for them. When you click on forms, you will get uh, everything that you have created here. Um, let me, I want to get one that's a little jazzed up. Um, let's see, last year, let, let's take a look at this. And you're going to get a lot of help. Now you can dress this up. I, okay, I, I got it. Uh, this is dressed up because you can create some background, much like uh, we're doing in our template and a background for our Office 365. A form can have uh, the same kind of flavor and uh, jazzing up. This is background over here. You can insert images uh, and create any number of types of form surveys, questions and jazz them all up with images, search images, and, and so on. So th this is what a form looks like. I'm gonna go back into my forms and let's take a look at what it, the tool looks like or the dashboard looks like for creating a form. You can do these practically uh, and it can be done on the fly. If you immediately have an idea or something that you want to check on your classroom's uh, understanding, you can do one quickly within a couple of minutes once you get used to the idea. Or uh, obviously, in your planning and prep for a lesson, um, you can do them uh, well ahead of time. This is uh, untitled form uh, number two. So we're going to change that title. And I'm just going to call this um, webinar demo. Let's say webinar form demo, okay? And you can add to the description of this, uh, um, let's just say uh, how to dot, 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 dot. And again, the, the intuition comes in now, okay, what can I do here? Well, this is kind of now the universal symbol for insert an image. So if you click on the icon at the end of the line, you can insert an image in your form and do a Bing search. Um, let's just say something to do with math. And all of these pop up. And okay, let's uh, let me let's see what that one looks like. So I click on the image, and obviously. Yeah, you know, there are hundreds. And you can go on and on. I, if you get paralyzed by choosing things as I do, I just, okay, this looks good, I'm taking it. So I add that. And it's going to pop it in here. So now we've got it jazzed up a little bit. And notice here I can uh, put some, this is for alternative uh, accessibility requirement. If this was going to be online and shared out, over the internet, then you have to do some accessibility uh, touch-ups to it. In other words, I'd have to say uh, several math symbols in the word math so that when uh, a disabled person 
goes to uh, is on this perhaps uh, has trouble uh, seeing things it would read what this image is okay so now I'm going to let's see let's change the theme as well the theme is what's going to appear in the background behind the actual form or set of questions so I can make it uh, just a simple colored background or if it's a uh, subject related and you can also customize themes as well down here let's uh it's a fairly sunny day let's um there's a couple of clouds up there now we've got our background okay so now we've got it uh, it's updated notice up here in the right hand corner it's saved as we go through it it's saved so let's add a question what kind of a question now this is a quiz what kind of a question is uh did i say quiz or survey here gee i forget yes uh, <laughs> i did i think you're right I, i'm sorry I'm sure you're right. i uh, uh they're very similar so they're they are they basically yeah. are uh, and the the ellipse the three dot ellipse over here i have more choices so this is in other words this is a multiple choice question this is where uh an answer must be keyed in this is where uh, a question can be rating. This is more like a, perhaps a, a poll, um, something like a calendar date, but you also have some app options. If you want to rank things, uh, you do a Likert scale. Um, th this is kind of weird. It's kind of fun yeah. actually, uh, but you have a, a whole host of options. But let's, let's just do, um, let's say we're going to do a multiple choice question. So when you, indicate the type of uh, questioning inquiry. You're gonna type the question in here. Um, this is math. Yes, I know, <laughs> is the product Ooh. of five times five. I mean, okay. this is absurd, but here we yeah. go. Uh, so I want, um, my option number one might be 10. Um, it might be 15. And I have additional options here. Um, 20. And 25. Okay. Now, which one of these is the correct answer? Well, you want to indicate that with here, I think. Yeah. Okay. So allow multiple answers. Yeah. <laughs> this that, type of question, you wouldn't. Do you want to make this question required? Now, if you're doing this as uh, an assessment in class, you're obviously going to want to make uh, sure that every student uh, answers it. Okay. So we go in here, I want to uh, add other option. I don't want the other option, I want to add, uh, so in other words, if the correct answer doesn't appear here, you can uh, allow room for uh, a text answer and, and allow students to put in their answer if it's not there. It might be a, like a trick way, that they, well, five times five isn't any of these, what's it going to be? Notice the asterisk here means that it is a um, required question. And I think the reason I'm not getting the uh, ability to indicate a correct answer is because I created a survey instead of a quiz. Uh, Raj, could it be yeah. that you have multiple answer availability? I don't think I indicated that. Yeah, I think it was I, still multiple answer. Uh, yeah, if you go right. back there. Go back to the, go down, go down. Oh, yeah. well, no, well, no, this this says allows multiple Oh, answers. no, okay, all right, okay. Yeah, yeah I don't want You that. should be able to uh, just pop that in. Yeah, you should be able to. I'm going back to, see, yeah. the thing was, it was a form, like a survey <laughs> form instead of a quiz. And yeah. That's where I, so this is, uh, <laughs> this is a better quiz. Because, the, yes, these these can be corrected. Yeah, 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 exactly. So let's let's go back here. Let's uh, recreate our theme. Oh, that's fun. 
Let's add that. Uh, and let's add a question again here at a multiple choice. See over here, this is what was missing in the, yeah, the, the yes, survey yes. is where I would indicate the correct answer. So what is the product of five times five? Option one. Uh, five, option two, 10, and then again, we're gonna add uh, 15. Twenty, twenty-five, and then we're gonna indicate that that is the correct answer down here. And see, this little bubble here, if they select uh, the right answer, they could be prompted with a great, you got it, or like try again, or you know, any, any kind of little prompt along the way here, um, which, which is a nice feature. But in, in some of the grades, we want kids to enjoy this. Um, down here, because it's a quiz, we can, it, I'm gonna create maybe five questions, and this, each question is worth maybe 20 points, so you can put, uh, a, a value in, or the uh, point value in here, and add another question. We could again make it required, okay? And our options over here, um, a drop down, or some to actually do some math and put a, a drop down would mean that the answers, um, when all you're going to see is the question. And then the ant uh, responses, the type of question uh, would be, your choices would be dropped down below it. And it might be things that you wanna save some space on the screen and so on. So if we, I'm gonna add one new question here. Um, let's see what a rating looks like. So you put in your question here and um, how did you like The class, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, let's say, yeah, uh, the video. Okay, you showed the class a video. How did you like the video? Uh, do you want to rate it uh, five stars? You can use a symbol. You can create different levels. I want you know out of ten. Low uh, stars. You can do um, just numbers like this. If you're doing a video. Uh, it's probably going to be, you know, tip, typically would be five, and we'd use uh, stars. Um, do you want to, well, this is kind of a, awkward if it's a math question, but let's leave it that way, okay? Now, if we go to the preview, you're, you do, you're creating question after question, um, survey, poll, after survey, uh, whatever you're testing or want to check the understanding for, and you go to the preview. Notice here, this is what the students will see. They would complete the questions, uh, no, required. If they didn't answer a required question, they would be reprompted uh, to answer the missing question. So let's say, okay, I got that one, and I only liked it, okay, and I submit it. Now, view the results. This is uh, something that I think teachers are gonna be very interested in because it, it's not here yet, but it can be tied to uh, the grade book, et cetera. You can uh, use it for grading purposes. Uh, some of the other options, obviously, when you create a, a test using, a, say, an item bank and so on, um, it can, uh, shuffle up the questions of the so no two students uh, sitting side by side would see the questions in the same order and so on okay go back to okay now i'm going to view the results you can if we go back into our quiz back here notice now we've got some responses uh 
I want to go back and look at some of the other ones that have been created uh, over a period of time. But you can see now. So here, now here are the responses. So I went back to my main menu, saw the question, noticed that there are responses available, and here is what you get back as a preview, or as say ongoing, as the students are, as you got 20 kids in class, you know you're waiting for 20 responses, but you can look at them as they come in. And you would get, you can break down, get a little bit more analytical, uh, how many students got this wrong? How many thought maybe product meant some? So they added it up and got 10 points. So uh, again, you might be testing the understanding of the mathematical term itself. Uh, this is additional information, more details. We'll see what that looks like. Um, you can prompt the kids as well when, when this is uh, distributed. You can prompt the kids uh, and know who answered what. So when you get into the, I have to move something here so I can see that. Um, go into your settings. You're working within your own classroom. So you want to record the name and allow one response per person. Or perhaps if you're doing something generally, you want to survey parents of things, you can say that anyone with the link can respond and it takes these options out of play. But only, let's say if it's a classroom, you only want one person and so on. Um, you can set a beginning and end date. You can do a, a, a lot of things, uh, controlling this if it's a survey versus a quiz and so on. So these are some nice options that you can uh, yeah. play with. Raj, yeah. in that options, there was the shuffle question in also, settings that was yeah in the settings going down options for responses I, oh yes yeah yes, I, I, you had here. mentioned yeah. it before so i just thought yes. that maybe the, if the people want to shuffle the question that way no two people think you would the same one yeah yeah mm -hmm. if you if you're um doing this in a class study obviously yeah. uh, kids are kind of bunched up and yet you yeah shuffle the questions and so on yeah. it doesn't affect how you see them when you look at the responses because mm -hmm. it, you know it does compile them uh, that there's a number of options here. You can say a thank you and so on. One of the things that uh, I, t I mentioned is this term called branching. Branching is uh, a really interesting feature. Uh, I'll talk about that a little later if I remember. Um, let's suppose the students pick number 10. And you can give a hint. Let's say they pick number 10. What if they pick number 10? Well, you can go to, let's say you had some questions uh, below. We only have two. Um, this could say, or you pick number five, go to the next question, go to the next question. This is all what's in play right now. If they pick, uh, let's say you want to remind them uh, what the term product means versus uh, addition or subtraction or uh, you know some of those math terms you could send them to a different question and go to the in other words they get it wrong this would just simply say okay I got that wrong they wouldn't even go to question two uh, we we do this a lot in um, some surveys the survey that was distributed late at the end of the school year for uh, the technology asking uh, a number of questions one of the early questions was uh, what grade level uh, are you teaching well it branched then depending on the selection there if you said you were an elementary teacher and it if you click the elementary then it would go to a series of questions directed only to elementary teachers if you said um, senior high school or high school it would go to some uh, then a series of prompts re related only to senior high school teachers and that had to do with the software and different programs that the different levels use that are uh, promoted and used within the district and in your curriculum and so on so you can use branching for uh, a number of possibilities there um, and it, it's really 
an interesting tool. Um, let's see where, where I was at the top here. The, the branching options. So you could have a different branch for each and every statement here. Uh, for example, if uh, number three would, the, the, it would all go to like three, four, or five, there would be a branch related to each one. So the, when I, if I say I want to branch that, if there were 10 questions, they would all be listed here. So depending if I answered this option, number five, I would go to one of the other options on the form here. And I can show you that probably a little better uh, detail when uh, if we look at a different uh, pre-created form already. So I don't know if there's any questions on this uh, uh, at, right at this point, how easy it really is. This is basically so your far. navigation bar. Yeah. Okay. So again, this is all in forms. Notice the most recent form created appears at the top of your list as we have them all. Mm -hmm. Probably so the you know the furthest one out was a demonstration uh, well, way back when. Look at the, yeah. you know almost yeah. a year ago. That one might be nice to look at the uh, responses, the results. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we're, I was going to pick one of them. And that, yeah, that's not bad. This, Gene, you would remember this one. Let's look yeah. at the Sunday webinar survey uh, from just about a year ago. And there were 36 responses. Well, let's take a look at the form, okay? It was basically generated. Um, we are doing this as a follow-up survey. I think that's why we had so many responses. Uh, mm -hmm. Why are you taking? I don't think there's any branching here. No, I, I, not that uh, I recall. You're right. Yeah. Download, you know, a number of things. But here, this is what you look like look at when you get responses. Now, okay, every question now. Uh, view the results. Respondent one, this was all done uh, anonymously. So this was respondent one. And this would go through, you know, all, all 36 people who took it, what their responses were. Well, that's okay. There's no real uh, information individually there, perhaps for this type of form. The average time it takes to complete, or the, it took respondent one a minute, 18 seconds. Respondent to 39 seconds. One of the things that we're concerned with when we create, say, district-wide surveys, and we're doing one, uh, working on one now, is how much time it takes to complete the survey. So when it's sent out to teachers, we say, please take, you know, approximately five minutes. So we want to create a survey that can be completed within five minutes, or uh, you know down and dirty very quick and get some uh, valuable information from it. Okay, so let's go back to our review result. Now, notice an option here, we'll look at this in a second. Um, and, and I'm gonna look at this too, I think I don't know how new that is. Uh, but 36 responses, so now it's taking all 36 responses and compiling them analytically uh, giving us a nice chart, depending on the type of question. Um, for eight people attended this webinar for the first time in their careers, et, et cetera, okay? Six regular attendees, and it breaks it down. Notice here, I go here. Notice here, it brings over. So if you're doing this as a demonstration, maybe uh, this, this is pretty helpful, uh, in, interesting anyway. Uh, Main reason I attend, uh, log into my account, and and so on. But for every one of the questions, you, there may be a, a few uh, ideas that uh, you're interested in. What do I want to really learn? That's the thing I'm finding out working on surveys. What is it I want to know? And we put in some test questions, and that doesn't really tell me what I thought I was looking for. So you can fine tune them that way. That, that's a whole area, a whole study, I guess. Um, 
some ideas. Let's see what these look like. It's analyzing all of the data. That was there. This is all done for you. This is all transparent. Uh, large percentage of people answered yes in question four, and most of them answered yes in question three. So we go back and say, oh, well, what is that telling us? What is that really good information or not? Or is it uh, something that really uh, is not what I'm interested in? That's, that this is where you've seen a lot of this rate lately in the news of the the whole idea of artificial intelligence. Uh, that's where this is coming from. It's, <laughs> right, it's understanding the data in its fashion. Let's open this in Excel. This is where the grading uh, aspect would come in. Okay, we're going to open this and see what it looks like in an Excel spreadsheet. I don't have to, I don't really want to edit it. I just want to be able to clean up the screen a little bit. If you did this as uh, a quiz, then you would have all of the students' names would appear here. And then each of their individual responses here. And no, this is the, kind of a, a different um, Excel spreadsheet. Notice all the drop downs here. You can sort eat any column. You can do a lot just simply uh, within Excel, uh, looking at your data. I don't know how familiar you are with your Excel. Uh, we're going to be talking about that in an upcoming webinar. But this is one of the things that I think people uh, can benefit from if they knew their way around Excel and look at some of these different options. You can drill down into some of this information and uh, pick up some uh, good ideas and maybe see some trends and things. Um, I just, the, you know, on a particular student and so on. If it was graded, if these were responses like we are creating in the math quiz or uh, some check for understanding, you could drill down and, and okay, how many kids pass? What is the average grade? You can do a number of things uh, like that as well. And there is a way to link this to um, your grade book when you produce a grade and so on. Uh, I don't have that capability because we don't have, Gene and I don't have classes and so on uh, to mess with this, but it could be a big help in creating some grading because the, the, the quiz is automatically uh, corrected. So then you instantly know uh, what um, the achievement level was or any particular student or the entire class. Let's, let's Close that down and uh, go back to our forms. Again, and here we are. Notice that's the most recent form I worked on. It now appears at the top of my list. If you are working in a class in uh, with Microsoft Office and doing Teams, you can create uh, a form and share that out to your team. Team meaning your entire class of students, or if you're doing some small group work, you could send, create a form and give it to one particular group of students. If you're just uh, doing some uh, specific instruction, uh, differentiating instruction for a group of students, they could be taking the quiz and other students not. And uh, man you manage that within your uh, Teams app. Branching. I talked about that this might be a better uh, option for branching. Let's see how many questions we got. Okay. So we're going to look at the branching here for this. Notice those questions. Uh, I should go, uh, should I go to the mall or go to the movies? Okay. If they say I, uh, response is I'll go to the mall, it goes to question three, which mall should I go to? I go to the movies, you go to the next question, which movie should I see? Which mall should I go to? So depending on the response, either this or this, it goes it automatically goes to the next question and you don't see it. 
one of the things I've seen is one more creative ideas was using this branching feature to write a story, uh, write your own adventure story, very popular with uh, kids and so on, um, depending on oh, what's the uh, popular uh, program yeah. from years ago, the Westward Journey, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the Pilgrims or, or the Oregon Trail. The, the or that's the one, the Oregon Trail. They're going out to the West Coast. And yes. They have to make some choices. They go to a store and buy certain items, or they have to make a decision. Do they go follow the river across the mountains? And then the branch could go depending on what the option is there. And uh, uh, this is something also your, your students have Office 365. They really want to get into a project, can write their own stories. Uh, you know, much like Harry Potter, you, you do this uh, spell and this happens, or do uh, pick the spell and so on, or uh, have characters make choices and uh, do that kind of thing with it. Uh, but it's very popular. Uh, I want to go back to, let, let's see, I, I didn't even jazz this up. If you were doing a, a story, uh, again, you could do all of the background, the theming, and so on. Um, here are the questions. I want to pick a theme. I, you could change all that stuff up here. Uh, might be something like this. Uh, and, and jazz it up. You can, again, here, insert an image. Notice here, suggestion, may, maybe. Mm -hmm. You can insert a video. So if you're doing something, maybe a short introduction, a video here, let's click that. And it's something from YouTube. Now I don't know, you know where this works with uh, the filter and so on, uh, but I think we're getting a little more relaxed with that, especially teachers aren't blocked. If you found a short snip of a video you wanted to add to introduce uh, a topic or reinforce uh, something you're teaching, uh, you can put the URL here, and then when they click on that question, um, they would the video would be viewable. And it's just a matter of, you know, again, following the prompts. Uh, you, if you knew what it was, you could uh, go out there, copy and paste the URL here, and then it would appear over here. So if you want to put a, a link to our... Uh, webinar videos in there. Uh, maybe, maybe we want to try. Oh, yeah. That would be so, fun. We'll do that first. Here. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll save that for another time. Right. So um, very straightforward. A, a key here, uh, This perhaps a little more prominent, uh, we had some issues with some forms created last year. Um, why were they getting, the, why was the form starting in a different question? every time and it had to do with what Gene pointed out earlier and what we talked about was the fact that it was shuffling the questions and it was a survey. Oh yeah. <laughs> well you don't necessarily you don't want to do that with a survey. <laughs> yeah. But it was very confusing because some of it was logical like uh, again it was I think it was that survey that we sent out at the end of the year for uh, technology. Um, they were getting uh, prompts all over the place. We uh, people person who was administering it uh, couldn't figure out why the answers were coming in the way they were on, on the demonstration and the, the practice run and it was that very simply uh, shuffled questions. Notice the start and end date. If you were doing this as a quiz maybe uh, associated with a homework assignment you could start it on a Friday and end it on a Sunday night and then after that it's not accessible. Um, you can do a, 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 you know, just about anything you're interested in. You want to send um, notification to email resist, uh, respondents and so on. The the sharing. This is interesting. Um, you can. These are the different uh, ways to share. You can share it as a link. You can share it as a, with a QR code that will create a QR code. Some of the schools, I think, did this for a survey uh, after a parent night or an open house. They could create a survey asking parents, you know, their general impressions and some for some specific feedback. Uh, 
and it would create a QR code. And if it does this, let's see, there it is. That's the QR code for this survey. So this could be put on a poster or a handout uh, given to parents when they leave your classroom if it's an open house. Uh, here, take this survey, and they can use their smartphones uh, to create the form. Uh, one of the things I want to show you, I'll, I'll get there in a second, you can share the template, and if you're working with a team of teachers, maybe grade level teachers or a committee in school, you can collaborate on the uh, form. Uh, if you want to create it that way, you can duplicate it. Uh, it can be emailed. You could even embed it. If you're using a class website, this could be embedded. Uh, and can we also embed it and send out to students as well? So there are a number of ways uh, to save it and to share it. The, uh, oh, say so where was I going with that next? The, the settings we talked about, uh, it, de it defaults to uh, certain things that one, doesn't default to shuffle the question because that's never assumed. But you can, uh, there also, oh, in the, in the preview, this is a preview. I mentioned uh, yes. you can also do this on a mobile device. This is, you're looking at the computer preview. If you say, I want, what's it going to look like on my phone? It'll show you what it looks like here which is kind of neat. And I, we're seeing more and more of this. I would think probably, depending on how uh, the policy is developed at the uh, secondary schools, this might be a viable option, certainly for parents if you're uh, sending this out. So it, this is how it's going to look uh, as a mobile device uh, and so on. And that's kind of neat. And as Gene pointed out, I think yesterday, uh, more and more like our website now is uh, device friendly, depend, depending on whether you're looking at a tablet or uh, any handheld device and so on, it's going to be um, viewable. I noticed on some sites still, if you're on your have your smartphone, it's not device friendly. You, you have to rotate the phone to maybe see more of the screen and so on. Gene, I don't know what else. Uh, well, that's to look at here. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I think uh, you've given people a pretty good introduction. And uh, there is a uh, little bit of a survey in the thank you note. Hopefully you'll get a thank you note. Uh, I got to double check uh, to make sure that they do come out. Uh, and if you have any further questions or concerns, please let us know if you'd like to get together sometime and say, hey, let's sit, sit down, maybe have a, an hour or two study group and work up a couple of these to get, you know, work on them together. A group of, right, a group yeah. of uh, sixth grade team or a, yeah. uh, whatever, a group of some grade teachers yeah. want to create some assessments based on a unit of study uh, yeah. in any of the subject areas and yeah. create and share some forms for it and, um, and make use of them that way. I urge you strongly to uh, download the form, mm -hmm. uh, the, the handout in today's webinar, and Follow the link. These two links go to the same place, and this one, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, will go out to this website, yeah. and if, you'll get some uh, it's a different a different view here. Once you once you sign in. Okay, there's that phone call, Gene. So Boy, you timed that perfectly. That and if you'll yeah, read the that? screen, we have about ten minutes. We'll be just about enough time to really give you a quick introduction to Microsoft OneDrive. Uh, uh oh, Raj. Hey, you look pretty good there. I can see you there. Maybe. Uh oh, what's going on here? Uh, I'm going. Change presenter. Can you do that? Okay. Okay, Raj should be going bye bye. He's not going bye bye. I don't know, Raj. Uh, why am I t uh, seeing you? I can't hear you, but I can see you. Um, I don't know. I'm going to click X out of there. I, okay, there now you you're gone. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are, are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Okay. All right. Again, uh, 
ladies and gentlemen, uh, real quickly, uh, taking a look at another tool that is available. Okay, there's our rainbow. Uh, I've got to move things around on my screen a little bit. Uh, that is available, another app available called OneDrive. OneDrive is terrific. Is, we mentioned this yesterday. Roger introduced it a little bit yesterday. OneDrive is a hard drive, and it is a huge hard drive, and uh, it's called a terabyte size, which is 1,000 gigabytes. Okay. And uh, I one time tried to look up, stupidly, how many gigabytes of storage it would take to save all of the documents in the Library of Congress. And of course that varied. Uh, and basically uh, the, the answer varied depending on you know the number of picture books and so forth as we said before. But if you were just doing the documentation without pictures, you could probably do it, they thought, in about 50 terabytes. That was the latest I saw. So what I'm saying is, you are being given a huge amount of information here. It's called OneDrive, and you can store your own information. What we recommend you do is this. Any information that you have been storing on your computer, any information that you've been storing on the school's networks, the N drive, the J drive, I don't know if there are any other drive, you know, the personal drive, you know, personal places that you've been putting up, take that information and upload it, put it on one drive. Why? Well, first of all, you will be able to access it anywhere. If you have the school network, for example, the J drive, you can't access that at home. You will be able to access this anywhere and, as Roger has been saying, with any device. Uh, you, <clears throat> excuse me. You can put the apps, the Microsoft apps, on your uh, Apple phone, your Android phone, whatever, your pads, and log in and use them there very efficiently. Now, what is OneDrive and how easy is it to use? We can do that in almost no time. This is, I hope, my OneDrive. Uh, this is what a OneDrive looks like. It has the look, basically, of a hard drive. Here are my files and my folders. Now, the first nice thing that I'd like to say about this is this. Um, have you ever tried to email somebody a document and found out it was too big or too large? And they can't get it. I know that, you know, uh, maybe in here I have a video or something. I know that some time ago, and I, and I use this as an example, when I'm in Florida, my daughter will say, hey, Dad, can you get me this video? I need to show it on, you know, the LaSalle News tomorrow. Well, I can get it, but how do I get it to her? It's very easy now. Once something is in OneDrive, it is very easy to share it with people. Notice, if you look down the right-hand side, I don't know if you can read this, it says sharing, private, 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 shared, shared. And here's how you do it. Say I have a document, I don't know what this is right here. I want to share this. If I click that, notice it's highlighted. Up here, I have a share. I hit share, a little window will open, and if I put there's Roger. It has the uh, <clears throat> names and addresses of most of the school personnel. If not, I could just put in a regular email address. Okay, so I'll hit Roger. I can hit send. He will get an email in his NF schools saying, it's a link, saying this has been shared with you. He can then go link to it and... Uh, and download it, use it. Once you are in there, you can set up also 
let me see if I can do this. Okay. Uh, ma you can, notice it says manage access. Uh, it's not, oh, I'm, I'm wondering why. Yeah, okay, there's the manage access over here. I'm saying, okay, you can allow people to collaborate with it, work on it, change it, so forth and so on. Uh, if you don't want them to uh, change it in any way, but they can download it or view it, you can set it up that way as well by going to Manage Access. Another thing you can do is, uh, along that line, if you have a document and maybe two or three people, you know, you shared it with two or three people, they changed it. Guess where the changes are saved? On your hard drive. And you go, oh, but I wanted the original. You can also go back and get the original. You can go back and see the changes and that have been made and saved. And to do that, I don't know, this is probably isn't going to work, but if you go to version history, it'll show you, see, mine only has one here. But if there were others, there will be several, three or four, three, modified by. And if Roger had taken that and changed it, it would say modified by Roger Carroll. I could click on this one and go back to the original. So that's another great thing about OneDrive. So those are just a couple of the things. Sharing is a great, great thing with your OneDrive. Now. How do I get my stuff into OneDrive? It's the easiest thing in the world, obviously. Uh, let me get rid of all this stuff here. Uh, if you don't see this up here, that means you've clicked on one of these little guys along the side. Notice it says Upload. Very quickly, Upload. When you click on Upload, you're going to be given a choice of either Files, notice that's plural, or Filter, which is singular. You can... If you click on a f folder, go in and select a folder. I'm in Dropbox now. Well, okay, well, let's go to my desktop and, okay, click this one. I could click Upload one folder at a time. If I wanted to, however, I can select several files, okay? I see... Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, let's just pick a couple of files here and then hit open. I wanted to show you. Notice up here over to the right, it'll say uploading two items. That was quick. It said uploaded two items to documents. They're already up here. Okay, those two items that I selected. Notice there they are a few seconds ago and a few seconds ago. That's how easy it is. Really, really, really. Uh, this is a protective <laughs> device, too. <laughs> if you have pictures on your computers, on your phones, wherever, and they can, you know, these, these, these uh, um, devices can go bad, and you don't have a backup copy, do recommend that you put them up there, okay? That brings up a point. Somebody will say, hold it, this is a school thing. Can I put my own personal documents and so forth up here? Uh, the last I heard, and I, uh, if Raj, I don't know if you're with me, Raj, but the last I heard and the document was the school will not, cannot go into the OneDrive. That is your personal OneDrive and see what's in there. So they will not do that. Okay? So you can store your personal documents in there. And that's another one of the benefits of Office 365 that you're being uh, entitled to because, uh, you know, being a teacher and so forth. But it is a great little thing. Now, there are, I'm, I'm going very quickly because I noticed the time and I don't want to keep you. Over here uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see files. And I'm in files right now. Recent will show you some of the things that you used recently, okay? Yesterday, today, you know, that's kind of cool. Real quickly, shared. These are some of the files that you have shared and with whom, okay? You'll see that 
some of these uh, files were shared with other people. And you know, here's a recycle bin. When you empty it, again, it goes into the recycle bin. I think, and I am not sure, that there is like a 90-day thing and then it goes. But I am not sure or if it stays there forever. I'm going to have to look that up. Okay? But this is OneDrive in about 10 minutes. But it's a terrific tool and really, really recommend that you use it. Uh, this is the place also, last statement, we talked yesterday in Word, when you're on Word online, uh, it, notice there will be a document, notice it says saved, that's where it would be saved. So if you need to access a document not using your online Word, it will be right in OneDrive. Hey, and with that, we've come to the end of the hour. We want to thank you for joining us. Uh, again, uh, hopefully there will be, and I will double check, uh, I noticed yesterday that the thank you notes weren't sent out. Uh, so they should be there from yesterday. They should be there today. Uh, but please open the thank you note. There's, a, I think, a two-question survey in there. And if you have any comments, concerns, whatever, please let us know. And with that, we'll say uh, have a nice day. Have a nice half hour if you're going to join, uh, join me for Word at uh, 1030. And we'll see you then. Okay? Take care.